I tie a heck of a lot of clousers. They're mostly the number two size clouser that uh, I use bucktail on. Um, but I also tie the number four size. And instead of using bucktail, I find that calf tail or a kip tail or a cow's tail, whichever way you want to call it, works much better. A um, lot less waste. You, you cut so much away from a bucktail to make a little tiny clouds or minnow like this. You know, calf tails are kind of pricey and there's a fair amount of waste on them. Um, uh, you get it down to the nice tip hair, you know, up near the end of the end of the uh, the cow tail, and you've got some nice, beautiful, nice long hair that makes great clousers. You know, the stuff that's down in here, it's uh, I use it for blondes and uh, a lot of bonefish flies, um, but. The problem is, oftentimes, you get, get down to the end of, a, of one of these kip tails, and it's a twisted up gnarly mess like this. Now, you know, sure, I could tie that on a hook, but it's going to be like this all the way down the, the shank of the hook, and doesn't present very well. And when you use this hair, of course, it's just a little too short. Well, over the years, I've collected several bags of these tip ends that have the twisted hair that I wasn't able to do anything with. Um, got into a conversation with a friend of mine and was talking about uh, trying to straighten these things out. And I tried soaking them in warm water, um, you know, kind of heat them up, let them dry out, and try combing them out. But, you know, this really has got a starch to it. It doesn't want to come out too easily. Well, in talking to somebody that doesn't tie flies and has really no clue um, other than seeing your nice finished product what what's involved in it and I tried to explain it to her you know how I could had to throw all these ends out or you know I I actually squirrel them all away I figured someday I figured I, I would figure out a way to handle it um she recommended a solution that made sense tried it out worked like a champ I turned one of these nice, you know, twisted up tails into this, which is a um, a lot straighter. I mean, it looked as bad as this one, but as you can see, it isn't perfect. But all of a sudden, I've got a whole bunch more hair that I can use, and not have to throw this thing out. Now. I figured I'd use something like a, a chemical uh, bath, you know, similar to maybe a permanent wave on, you know, for for ladies' hair. Um, but I figured that'd be a little expensive, and it might mess with the dyes on these these fluorescent colors. Um, she gave me another solution. Ended up being a very cheap one is a hair straightener of all things. Now I'd heard of curling irons but I really never realized that they made a a hot iron that uh, was meant to actually straighten your hair and, and, and take any wave or kink out. Um, this is just a little mini one uh, but it's the perfect size for you know working on these little end pieces you know just heat this thing up and run this hair. Um, I'm also curious every once in a while I get some funky neck feathers off off some of the roosters that have a, a weird twist in them. I'm wondering how well it'll work for that. I'm gonna try it later on. 
But anyway, uh, sometimes approaching a problem from someone else's perspective, uh, that is, uh, someone who doesn't actually tie the flies, uh, can be very, you know, fruit, uh, fruitful. Um, this is a case. A little cheap uh, straightening iron. I'll bet you you could pick uh, one of these up down at the local Goodwill store for just a few bucks. Um, nothing fancy about it at all. Anyway, sometimes it helps to uh, approach a problem from somebody else's perspective. And I like to think that I think outside the box quite a bit at the time, but would have never come up with this without her help. Anyway, go pick yourself up one of these things. It might come in handy sometime for your fly time. Thanks.